This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We have got a wide open slate for K-Props tonight over at FanDuel Sports, but because there's no real runaway guy who you know will be the front runner with regards to leading the slate in strikeouts, we're going to talk to pitching ninja Rob Freeman, get his read on the pitchers for tonight, try to see if we can identify maybe someone with good odds to lead this slate in strikeouts, talk some strikeout props, and I'll talk some money lines I like later on. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for Number Fire. Joined here, as mentioned by Rob Friedman. Check him out on Twitter at Pitching Ninja. You can find his work over at Peacock, MLB.com, MLB on Fox, and of course here at FanDuel Sportsbook as well. Rob, it is a pretty fun slate for tonight, despite the fact there's a lot of uncertainty. Maybe that makes it more fun. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing great. And I, I agree with you. It kind of it's a double-edged sword, right? I kind of yeah. think it's more fun to figure out like who's going to lead the day and K's because it's not that obvious to me. Although last week I thought, I mean, I was confident on my pick. My pick just didn't do it. Yeah. I mean, like it's also tough because we're coming off of a hive yesterday where you had Blake Snell go bananas. And then in the nightcap, Braxton Garrett just going off. Uh, Garrett's strikeout prop was five and a half yesterday. He doubled that up. So it's kind of weird to come down from that to being like, there are guys we like on this slate, but there's no like, definitive guy who we think can, you know, we can say, see some guys put up 10, but like, it's pretty wide open overall. So it's weird to go from Snellzilla to what we were at for today. Yeah. And I think nine, nine or 10 could win it today yeah. too, just because of where we're at. So yeah, this is going to be, it's kind of, again, it's fun. It's fun to figure it out. All our right. logic in the world isn't going to necessarily be right, but right. we'll help our odds. We'll see. And uh, maybe we'll get a surprise one like Brian Wu last week, which was uh, a lot of fun to see. Maybe we'll get a surprise guy sneaking in there as well. We'll talk about Rob's strikeout props he likes for today first, and then we'll get in to the strikeout leaders in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Also, do not forget we are now up over on the FanDuel TV Plus app as well. So if you got the FanDuel TV Plus app on Amazon Fire, Apple TV, or Roku, you can check us out along with the Solo Shot, our our daily fantasy baseball podcast up and Adams run it back all right there on the FanDuel TV plus app along with the FanDuel YouTube page. So check out the show and make sure you're subscribed wherever you prefer to consume it. Let's dive in now to this slate for today, Rob, and let's start things off with your strikeout props. When you look at the slate for tonight, obviously, again, we don't have a lot of like huge strikeout guys, but that also means we can get some pretty low numbers on guys who are kind of enticing. So which strikeout props stand out to you for today? So I like Lozardo, um, and I, I'm always biased in favor. I think he's got really, really good stuff, and he's always, you know, he's he's a threat to throw off a bunch of a bunch of Ks, go right. deep into games, all that. Um, pitches better at home than on the road. And I think following Garrett's performance yesterday. You know, I can see them knowing how to attack hitters and similar but better stuff to me. So he's a threat to to rack up a lot of Ks, I think. Lizardo strikeout profit FanDuel Sportsbook right now. Six and a half strikeouts, minus 110 on the over. And the thing that I love about Lizardo, Rob, is he always seems like he's never content. He's he's tinkering. Because last year when he came back from his injury, he seemed like he started throwing that two-seamer a bit more and to good success. And this year he scaled back on that a bit, but he's still been overall pretty good. And it seems like to me, he's always trying to find that next level. Does that kind of give you, you know, you've mentioned that you've kind of, you've kind of find a bias towards him. Does the constant tinkering, constant thinking kind of put you on him here? Um, It absolutely does. I think he's one of the more thoughtful guys in baseball. He's a very mature dude. I know him. I'm like, he can, he's, he does think about the game like that. And he he has, you know, ace level stuff, and it's just a matter of all this tinkering, finally figuring out what works, and it, it can be frustrating. Sure, you know, like we talked about Snell, I consider him also the a guy that could go on a run of striking out eleven guys in a row. Right. Um, we'll see. Like I I I love his stuff, love what he's about, and would would love to see him beat the number because I picked it. 
yeah, again, that's six and a half minus 110 on Lazardo. And you don't want to over tinker, but I think that putting that thought into it is always an encouraging thing. Which other strikeout props are you liking for tonight, Rob? I mean, I like Senga, another guy I'm a little biased in favor. I think he's got wicked stuff. Um, he he just loves being that guy on the team because he he's he's he just he oh he wants to be a positive contributor and he has been. He's been really good at times, and I can see him. What he have nine last time against Philly, I think. Yeah. Um, can he do a similar thing today? Maybe like his stuff yeah. is definitely there. Uh, on the road, I think last time might have been at home. That's a little bit different, but uh, yeah, we'll see. I also I mean, you know, Walker, somebody to take a look at. I think he's yeah. better than people think recently. Uh, four and a half for Walker is a pretty low number, plus 114 on the over there. You talked about him last week, and I think he had eight strikeouts in that A's game. So, pitched really well. And I think his last three, it seems like he may have turned a corner specifically in that time. So, honestly, both these guys are fun. The one concern here is weather. Uh, there is a lot of rain near Philadelphia, so you got to make sure that there's not going to be an in-game delay that gets these guys yanked. But Senga, I have projected for 7.01 strikeouts. So six and a half is his number, plus 112 on the over. You know, it's kind of one of those things where as long as the walks don't get in the way, in the way, he's always a threat to get you seven or more strikeouts. Yeah, he go, he's another guy who goes deep into games and has stuff to back it up and, and to get a bunch of case. The rain always bothers me. Like yeah. I, I sit there and all the logic in the world can't deter, can't help you with the weather. So, well, if I look at like the main daily fantasy slate for tonight, so no Eflin and no Lazardo, uh, starting with the 7.05 PM games, my two highest strikeout projections are for Walker and Senga and they're in the same game. So hopefully the rain stays away because that would be a bummer to not be able uh, to look at those two guys. Absolutely. Any other catching your eyes for tonight, Rob? Um, I like Bayo. I think he's been doing really well. Yeah. I mean, he seems to have found it. And last year I was, you know, I, I covered them for, for Nesson. Yeah. And he was always that guy that you knew had the stuff and it was just a matter of young pitcher figuring it out. And I think he has figured it out. So I look for him to hopefully go deep into that game and get a bunch of, a bunch of K's as well. Bayo also plus money in the over. He's at plus 122 to go over five and a half. Taking on the White Sox, pretty neutral strikeout team. But as you mentioned, Bayo can't get strikeouts. And the thing that I like about him, Rob, specifically, is that he gets ground balls too. And obviously that doesn't translate to strikeout props directly, but it does allow you to go deeper in games because you're not getting hammered. And I know that that's like counterintuitive because like if it's a ground ball, it's not a strikeout, but I do like that. It makes him a more effective overall pitcher and gives me more confidence. He can be out there for six, seven innings to get you to those uh, six strikeouts. I, I totally agree with you. I mean, I think that that's an underrated thing. You want a guy that's going to go deep into a game and also get you strikeouts. I There's nothing worse than like a, a two strike ground ball though. Like, yeah, you got an out, but you just come on. You've got the two, you're watching the MLB app. I know you've got all your monitors, but I can't oh, yeah. watch all games at once. You know, I've got it up on the app and I see the two strikes. It's like a one, two count. You see the blue dot up here and it's, it's in play. And you're like, ah, dang it. Every time, just a bummer. <laughs> There's no worse feeling in the world unless it's a, you know, unless it's an under, which occasionally does happen for sure. Yeah. Now, not, not with me though. I don't like exactly. <laughs> like I'm a pitching ninja. We're supposed to get a lot of strikeouts. Exactly. We're rooting for strikeouts. We want those third strikes. We want pitchers to succeed as always. Now we do typically talk about the prop to lead the slate in strikeouts. That is not currently up over at FanDuel Sportsbook because I think there was some uncertainty for Dane Dunning starting for the Rangers. So um, they have not posted that number. Actually, the Yankees flipped to Severino as opposed to Clark Schmidt. That was the reason why that number is not up. So we don't have the actual odds yet. And obviously they're very important, but I want to ask you, Rob, in general, which pitchers do you think have the upside to push to lead this slate in strikeouts? So we can kind of look at their numbers first and see if we think their values for tonight. Yeah, I mean, to me, I was I'm leaning towards Lazardo yeah. today because again, I think following Garrett's performance, seeing how to attack those hitters will help him. And he's got the stuff to back it up, and he can strike out double digits. So that's where I'm leaning. I'm curious to see what his number is going to be, but even blindly, and I know it's, it can't be like, he's not going to be the odds on favorite because there isn't one with this. Slate. Right. So right. I, I think that that's where I'm leaning, but. You know, yeah. I think that Lazardo would probably be my pick to be like the top end guy too. 
I was curious about Zach Eflin uh, facing the Royals. He is at home for today, and Eflin is pretty inconsistent as far as strikeouts go, where he can have, I think he had a zero strikeout game against the Astros or something a couple weeks ago. So he can have clunkers, but he also does have like these spike games. Is Eflin someone who would be in your consideration set or not quite there? Oh, without a doubt, he'd be like, I, that's the way I view him. It's a crapshoot. Yeah. Like you yeah. can get a Zach Eflin that's going to strike out 12 dudes. Right. And that's definitely not like if he, if you told me he struck out 12, I wouldn't say, oh, my God, that came out of nowhere. I'd be like, <laughs> yeah, that's the Zach Eflin we get. But right. he'll also he also could pitch a shutout and and strike out three. So, right. yeah, I, do, I just don't know. Like, I have no problem with the logic of backing him, though. Right. And then you have like even Logan Webb at the end of the day. Yeah. Webby's been pitching great. And, you know, I mean, could he could he get a bunch? Sure. Every once in a while. It's a tough team, though. Yeah. Like, and I think that Webb is like the best, like real world pitcher. Like if we're just talking like ignoring strikeouts, best real world pitcher. Like you said, the matchup stinks both from like a quality perspective and a strikeout perspective. But like sometimes maybe you just want to bet on the best guy. And I think that Webb, to me at least, I think that he's probably the guy I'd pick there as far as best overall quality. Just a question of will that translate to strikeouts given the matchup? Yeah, totally agree. And I think this is that's what make this makes this slate kind of fun though, because yeah. like the let you know, when you have Spencer Strider at two to one or something right. like that, you know, he's an obvious favorite. Today right. it's like I was going through the slate going, who would be the favorite today? Yeah. My guess is it's again, I think Lazardo logically I can right. get there, but logic doesn't always pay out on these things. Like it does not. That is yeah. for sure. But a fun night. So check out some of the guys Rob discussed. Checking out Jesus, Lazardo, Kode Senga for the strikeout prop there. Brian Bayo against the White Sox. Those are the three strikeout props Rob is digging into and kind of check out the odds board. Once it comes up for the pitcher to lead the Slayton strikeouts, if you can get a soft number on Lazardo, that could be pretty enticing. Uh, but just overall, kind of dig in and see where you're seeing the value there. That is Rob Friedman. Make sure you check him out on Twitter at Pitching Ninja. Find his work at Peacock, MLB.com, MLB on Fox, and of course here at FanDuel Sportsbook as well. Rob, enjoy all the baseball for tonight. Have a fantastic weekend. Appreciate it as always. Thank you. Before I go, there's a 25% Pitching Ninja profit boost token today too. So Ooh. you get a free 25% profit boost on any game from the 23rd to the 25th on a straight bet. So the daily strikeout leader counts. Oh, interesting. So you yeah. could take, even if Lazardo is like the favorite, you could make, you could pu push him out a little bit, 25%, or you could take that, that Senga strikeout number with plus money on the over, push that out. That's pretty enticing. You said for any game between now and when? Yeah, uh, now on the 25th, I believe it is. So you get a profit okay. boost on on any straight bet, and the parlor and the uh, daily strikeout leader counts as it. So I was planning on using mine for Lizardo, but I like to see the odds. Yeah. Okay. I love it. Well, thank you for getting that in there. I appreciate that. Uh, Rob, good luck to you. Rooting for Lizardo for tonight. Rooting for rooting for the parlay as well. Good luck to you, and we'll talk to you again next week. Awesome. See ya. All right. Thank you again. That is Rob Friedman. Find him on Twitter at Pitching Ninja and find all of his fantastic work again. Peacock, MLB.com, MLB on Fox, and here at FanDuel Sportsbook. If you want to see uh, his parlays, I believe they're posted in the uh, FanDuel Sportsbook lobby uh, each and every day. So you can find those there to find them. And hopefully we do get that strikeout leader leaderboard up here before the end of the day over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Again, the switch for the Yankees to Severino over Schmidt is the reason why. That was not posted before we record. We'll talk about a couple of money lines I like for tonight that do make me a bit nervous, but we'll talk about them here in just one second. But first, baseball season is in full swing, and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now, new customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. It's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. So don't miss your chance to snag a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. When you join FanDuel today, FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball, Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only, $10 deposit required. Refund issued is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. 
Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Arizona. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Massachusetts, gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org. In New York, one 878 hope and wire text open y And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Let's talk through some money lines. I like for today, both these are underdogs. One of them is a big underdog. So a lot of uh, trepidation there. We'll talk about that in a second. Let's start things off, though, with a bit of more of an even matchup. That is between the Milwaukee Brewers and the Cleveland Guardians. I like the Brewers' money line. That is currently plus 122 at FanDuel Sportsbook. And the reason I like this one is because I've got this as pretty much a toss-up with the Brewers' win odds at 49.7% versus the implied win odds at plus 122, which are 45.1%. The reason that I'm here is, although I'm skeptical of the Brewers' starter, Wade Miley, I'm also not fully sure that Shane Bieber is back yet. He has gone seven plus innings in each of his past two starts, which is great. But in the second start there, his most recent one still let up a lot of hard contact. And that hard contact has been a pretty big issue for Bieber early in his career, but also here this year in the seven starts, he's been throwing fewer sliders. Bieber's hard hit rate allowed is 44%. It's a really big number. And it gets worse when you see that his strikeout rate in that time is 16%. So he's lining up a lot of balls in play, and those balls in play are well hit. That's not a great recipe for success. As for Wade Miley on the opposing side, he came back off the IL last week, and in his first start back, the velocity for Miley was weirdly good. Uh, he's not a hard thrower, but the velocity on his cutter was the best it's been all year. And in that game, he held the Pirates scoreless for five innings. So. I understand why Cleveland is a favorite in this game. Their money line is uh, currently minus 144. I just don't think they should be as heavily favored as they are for tonight. I think this one actually should skew more towards the Brewers making this kind of a toss-up game. So the Brewers are plus 122 to me. Quality bet, not a big believer in either offense, honestly. So that nullifies the concern on the, the Milwaukee side. So to me, the Brewers money line plus 122, a good value money line for tonight. The other money line, <clears throat> I don't blame you. You don't want to come with me on this one because it is definitely a little bit unnerving. It is in the late one of the later games. That is the Washington Nationals money line. They are plus 235 taking on the San Diego Padres. I actually do think the Nationals are a value here. Let's talk through that. Uh, this is definitely one where the odds this bet wins are pretty low. And you want to account for that when you're allocating your bet size. You want to know that you're probably going to lose that money because I've got the Nats win odds at 33.6%. So the odds this bet loses 66.4% if my model is correct. But that's still more optimistic than the market is because the implied odds at plus 235 are 29.9%. So I bet NASCAR a lot. I'm okay with having bets that I think will lose if I think that they are values relative to the market. And that's exactly what we have here. You kind of have to be okay with losing and not having like a 50% hit rate if you think they are good values, which I think is what that is for today. Even though Patrick Corbin, uh, the starter for the Nationals, has struggled on the whole this year, he's also volatile. He can have occasionally pretty good starts. So volatility for a plus 235 money line is a positive thing. Joe Musgrove starting here for the Padres. He has been very good at suppressing hard contact. It's been a 21% hard hit rate across his past seven starts uh, where he's been leaning more on uh, that curveball. So that's a legitimate skill and something I'd expect to continue. But his strikeout rate has also been low. The Nationals are a low strikeout offense, which means we probably should see a lot of balls in play here. And balls in play in general are pretty volatile events. So that's why I think that the Nationals may be undervalued in this market. Now, as always, you do have the option to go with the run line instead. Uh, the Nationals are currently plus 116 to cover a run line of plus one and a half, which means they're plus 116 to lose this game by a run or less or potentially win this, or to, to lose this game by a run or win this game. 
obviously that gives you more flexibility. The reason I don't want to go there personally is because Corbin could get torched. We saw the Padres light up Alex Wood last night. They're a very good offense against lefties, and Corbin has some true clunkers. So if they lose, they could lose by 10. And I'd rather take a more volatile market that is okay with that volatility, and that is the money line. So to me, I want to go with the higher upside market. The Nationals money line is plus 235 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. This one did lengthen overnight, so there is a shot that you can get better at plus 235 later on. Obviously, you don't want to bet against the market, but I think this one's moved enough where the Nationals are an actual value for today. So the two money lines I like for tonight are the Brewers at plus one and 22, the Nationals at plus 235. As always, though, account for the fact that both those bets based on my model have less than 50% odds of cash. So account for that within your bet allocation. Know that there's a good chance these bet lose, bet bets lose. But to me, they lose less often than the market implies, which is exactly what we want. We don't want to be, you know, we don't want to have the highest win rates. We want to have the highest profitability rate. And I think that's the way you can find things uh, with that. So proceed with caution as always. Make sure you're never betting more than you can allow. But these are value bets based on my model for tonight. That's all we got here for today on covering the spread. But again, want to give a big thank you to Rob Friedman. Check him out on Twitter at Pitching Ninja. Hopefully a lot of Jesus Lizardo gifts coming your way for tonight over there. Do not forget to subscribe to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcasts, you can find us. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. Also check us out on the FanDuel YouTube page where you can leave a thumbs up there and on the FanDuel TV Plus app, wherever you uh, are on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku as well. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J I M S A N N E S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets across MLB for tonight. We'll talk to you once again Monday, probably talking some more baseball then as well. We'll talk to you then. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 